Welcome to the Sage Advice Podcast, transforming the way people think and work so their organizations can thrive. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to our webcast. I am here today with Jody Paydar, who is the radical CPA, and of course, now Vice President of Botkeeper. Well, welcome, Jody. Welcome. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you, Ed. As I said, we have no fever, so we're, we're, we're yes, making, no making fever. progress. No, fe- no fever. You're all good. Uh, so we wanted to, to to talk a little bit today about obviously the the crisis, but I think a, a, a more interesting conversation that I've been having over the last couple of days has been more around. Yeah, we all knew we had to get to work. You're working out of your daughter's bedroom. Um, life hasn't changed for me. I've always worked out of my office here in my home. Uh, I'm not getting on an airplane five times a month, so that's that that's a big change. But what do you think about this whole disruption thing? is going to stick. So I, I don't know if it's good or bad either. Right. Like I'm going to say yeah, like, yeah. so I think the whole idea of um, meeting people in contact with people is going to be weird. Right. So even when we go back to work, what's that going to look like? Are we going to shake hands? Like, that's like, kind of like, kind of like from being Italian and like kind of very touchy feely and a <laughs> hugger and all this stuff. Like I, it, like, what's going to happen to like the handshake or the hug or the greeting or all of that, which to me is like going to be weird. And I think it's going to stick. I don't think people are going to go back to those old social norms. Right. And then I think from a technology perspective, I think um, all this cloud stuff that we've been talking about forever is like finally going to stick because people, I mean, I hope we get out in a few weeks. But what happens if we go back into quarantine in the fall or whatever? Who knows, right? So if if all of that is really going to change, then the whole remote workforce and the things that we've been talking about for the last 10 years are really going to have to evolve and stick, which I don't think is a bad thing. I mean, I, I mean I've been preaching the cloud and results-driven work environment and all these things for all these years, and now we have the cultural shift that is going to force the change management. So there's no change management anymore. Like you can't manage the change. You just have to change, which isn't really a bad thing. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. It's going to be interesting. I mean, I mean, certainly what we're going to be able to, what we've learned is that we're capable when necessary of operating more remotely. And we have been successful in doing that. And some people might say, look, Hey, I've been very successful at doing what I'm doing. Why would I have to go back to the office? So I think that, and they'll have they'll have a point there, and that's that's the results only work environment, right? You know, as as uh, Jody Thompson says, it doesn't matter if you're you're in the office, you're at a Starbucks, or you're following what's left of the Grateful Dead around. It doesn't matter as long as you get the results done for the position, right? Now, I guess the question though is, is are there still going to be people who come back and say, yeah, but I still like that at least on a fairly regular ba- basis that interaction. So maybe it's you know Mondays and Wednesdays come to the office. And and we start to see the emergence of not just one day a week tele whatever I hate right. that phrase but but we we do say yeah we we do need to gather together we do need some time where innovation takes place in in a col- more collaborative mode face to face I still still think there's something to be said for that yeah and I always have you know for as remote as we've always been we've always had a physical location so and this is again over a number of years um, so. I think that we still will have that, but I just think that um, the workflows and all the things that CPAs have been fighting or accountants have been fighting for years, they're going to be forced to change, which again, I think is, is not a bad thing, you know, um, because there are, there's lots of collaborative ways to work remotely where everybody can work together. Now it doesn't have to be every day, but the fact that you can be home and work and really work, not halfway work, right? Um, will be really important to, I think, the profession as a whole. Uh, I also think it's interesting from the standpoint of making people um, adopt new technologies, right? Like, again, you're not gonna be able to, to, to get away with not figuring it out, which um, I, I honestly think there are lots of good things that are coming out culturally from the pandemic that, you know, you don't wish a pandemic on on everyone or on anyone, but at the end of the day, like it's going to give us an opportunity to have truly a renaissance and a rebirth. And the innovation that's going to come out of it is going to be amazing because we already see it. Like I already see it in my client base, some of the new stuff that they're doing and it's amazing. And I, and I keep thinking, wow, like people like 
they, their own ingenuity to come up with new stuff is just really, really cool. And to me, that's like, that's the good stuff that we should be focusing on instead of the doom and gloom of the recession that everyone seems to be talking about. I agree on that. And it, it remains to be seen is what this pause button, sleep mode, whatever you want to call it, what the self and or great, what a great suppression as one economist calls it. I really like that phrase. Great suppression is going to happen. Can, can we come out of it quickly? And, you know, we're starting to see maybe small signs now, but it, it's, it's clearly going to be some time. One thing I, I just want to get your perspective on as an accountant, and this was something that Doug Sleater pointed out um, in a conversation that I had with him last week on the radio show with, with Ron and that was if ever there was a time that, that accountants needed to realize that their balance sheet and income statement were completely meaningless, it's now when we figured out, based on what was happening with PPP and all that, that we, what, cash flow, what, the, what, the, what, what, their, what their customers wanted, show me how the cash is going to flow or not flow, period, end of story. Don't give me that income statement accrual. I, I don't... Do I have the money? <laughs> and I, I want your thoughts on that because I think that it might be a, a, a case where we start to see this emergence of, well, yeah, we're still going to do your income statement and balance sheet because we have to for your tax return. But really, like every month showing you that, how about we focus on your cash flow? So I think there's two pieces to it. And uh, a shout out to Botkeeper on this perspective, right? So um, right now, bookkeeping and the on the data that substantiates it is air. You cannot do a cash flow projections without having those historicals and without understanding that stuff and having it in a good spot. Yep. So you can't catch up a year of bookkeeping to do a cash flow projection for tomorrow, right? Nope. So, so everyone who has not had clean financials and has always been catching up and doing like gone. Like you guys are still going to be waiting in line for loans because you you just don't have the data ready to take it to the next step. So bookkeeping today is like air. Now add a piece of advisory on it. For instance, we were able to go right into um, loans and part of our loan package, what we were selling, um, part of it is the actual SBA loan. And the other piece of it is a cash flow projection that has to go into the SBA loan. What was interesting about that, Ed, and you'll like it from a pricing perspective, is let's say our client can't get the SBA loan for whatever reason that's out of our control. First of all, we're taking an advisory approach to them. So we're walking alongside of them. We're not telling them what to do or how to do it. We're walking alongside and giving them those options. But the second piece is, is let's say they don't get that loan because of whatever reason the SBA can't fund it, whatever, right? That's out of our control. We've also broken it into a piece of a cash flow projection where they will get exponential value for learning how to manage their cash flow over the next three months, six months, nine months, regardless of if they get the loan or not. So what it does is it gives accountants and CPAs the opportunity to use their superpowers, right, of understanding all that data to package it together and really be that most trusted advisor to our account or to our small business owners. Now, those are progressive accountants. Those are people who see it, who get it, who understand it. There were lots of CPAs who amongst all the chaos just said, we're not doing loans. Like you're not like, how are you not? How are you not being there for your client? How are you not helping them to breathe? Right. If the data is their error, how are you not, I don't know, giving them a ventilator for all intents purposes. Right. Yeah. And there are a lot of CPAs and accountants who said, we're, we're not going to touch those. So, so I think what it's going to do is it's going to separate the real advisors from, from the not advisors. And if they can't make that leap, which we've been talking about again for years, then you know what? Survival of the fittest. Is that, uh, I mean, is that bad to say? No, I don't know. Certainly, (laughs) certainly survival of the most adaptable. Right. And 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 what you have to adapt to is is this this the, the concept that t- has been around. You know, cash is king, and 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 uh, you know, for the life of me, I, I still can't figure out why there were so many accountants out there who were obsessed with. Well, don't worry about it; just bring me your shoebox or you know their updated technology Ziploc bag, uh, <laughs> Ziploc bag of stuff at the end of the year, and I'll figure it out for you. I mean, that they, in my in my opinion, they were doing their charges their customers, their clients, a disservice by allowing that to continue. Absolutely. Absolutely. And now, I mean, the good thing too, is you, 
I would say one of their old excuses was, well, my business owner doesn't want to change, which I would disagree with. I would have said it was the partner who was forcing their own beliefs on that small business owner. But guess what? Now that small business has to change too. So if you're a CPA or an accountant and you're not helping your customer change, then who's who's the malpractice on, right? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be part you gotta be part of that transformation. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, so Jody, what what out what else about this? What what else have you seen? I mean, there's clearly the the cash flow piece. There's cl- clearly the the automation piece. Is there anything with uh, other technologies coming down? You know, a blockchain that that you you might see adapted, not necessarily in the immediate term, but in a in a in a the intermediate term. You know, the the, the shorter shorter term that w- w- will start to get people on board. Hey, we probably should have been thinking about this stuff. Well, I think if you think about it as, you know, the data being air, right? Now, what can you do with it? So I think cash flow statements are just the beginning, right? So Mm. now you can become more of a managerial accountant. You can help them with pricing opportunities. I I think that's the other really cool thing that um, accountants have the opportunity to do. And I think too many accountants, when they look at cash flow and they look at um, financials, they look to cut costs instead of helping clients build their business. So What's really cool is you see all this innovation happening in your small businesses is how can you help them figure out how to price things differently, how to move to selling something online. My favorite story is of um, the movie theater in our town is selling popcorn on Wednesdays and Saturdays and you can buy it via Facebook. And then they have like a drive up and you can pick up the popcorn. Well, first of all, what's the most expensive thing with the least amount of cost at the movie theater? Yeah, popcorn. popcorn, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, okay, you can't come see the movie, but guess what? They sold out of the popcorn lineups. So, <laughs> so here's a business that's like kind of switched it up. And yet, like, again, you know, someone who was a little bit less innovative might say, oh, well, you can't sell popcorn and you should just without the movie. Okay. Right, without the movie. <laughs> Seven dollars. They're buying it. People are buying it. So again, like the innovation and the sparks and all that stuff. To me, that's the cool stuff. So as accountants, how can we help our small business owners capture that to, you know, turn it into viable businesses, right? That That's what we should be able to sure. help them from an advisory perspective. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny. There's, there's uh, be the book behind me, Baker's is up there someplace. And, you know, he, had, and he has more than one chapter and more than one book on why is movie theater popcorn so expensive, which I think is funny. I didn't that, know that. that. that, that, that yeah. That the whole parent, <laughs> well, the whole parent, cause it's, it's actually was called two gated pricing where, you know, the first, the movie theater owner doesn't know who the popcorn eaters are. So they want to keep the <laughs> ticket price low. Right. To, oh, so that, right. To get to the, to, to, to sell them the expensive popcorn. And, you know, and this, this situation is completely flipped it. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting thing, but I, I just want to tell you a quick story uh, on this is a, lo- I got a local uh, restaurant. It's a tapas kind of place. And the, 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 obviously the restaurant industry severely impacted by this whole thing, but What's really interesting about this guy's business model is that he, in addition to selling food, also had wine lockers that he sold to his customers on a subscription basis. So people stored their wine at his place because it was Mm -hmm. meant to be this neighborhood type thing. And of course, he says, I had a waiting list of people who wanted lockers. So even if there were people who said, hey, I'm starting to pull back, I just went through the list of, well, are you ready for it? And you know, some people were no, but he was able to continue his business almost fully unscathed because what he created was, it. yes, it sold food, but it was really about the wine storage locker subscription right. basis, right? So I think that we're going to start to see the emergence of more and more overall things on a subscription Type, type well, basis. Yeah. And if we want to talk pricing, Ed, because I know you never want to talk about pricing. No, never. I hate that. <laughs> but what's been, <laughs> but what, what I think is so cool about this too is, is you know, trying to help um, CPAs and accountants understand truly their value, right? Because if we're truly selling air today, which I believe we are, how can we help them price it up front? so that they don't get lost or not give it away, right? From the, Mm -hmm. oh, but it's so easy for me to do. Oh, my client can't afford it, right? I think there's a whole nother bigger conversation that has to start happening around it because um, for the accountants and CPAs who weren't, who who didn't really get value pricing or even fixed pricing for that much, like, guess what? If you don't start pricing up front now, you're not going to get paid because I guarantee once those bills comes, it's going to be the bill and duck. 
right? Because, oh, well, I don't know. And I don't have any money. And now what are you going to do? And you already did the work. And I mean, like, if, if again, that's a positive, right? A long-term positive that I believe is going to come out of this is that culturally payment options are really going to change. Yep. Agreed. Uh, last thoughts, Jody, as we wrap things up for today. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, what are my last thoughts? Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I guess, you know, the last couple of weeks have been, I went from kind of my, oh my God, it's the end of the world, doom and gloom. I can't take this emotionally. This is crazy. And I, I've kind of like turned the bend now. And now I'm like, okay, this is kind of like, we're in our steadiness of like, okay, this is the new normal. What is this going to be like? And I think the more that I've been able to focus on the future and on the innovation and on the rebirth of what's coming, it's been better for me mentally than to think about the destruction. So I think that, you know, as CPAs, like and accountants, because we're so immersed in all of this loss, the more we can focus on the positive and what, what is going to come out of it, I think is good for us. And then I think the last piece is, is when we do go back to work, whatever that looks like, well, I don't, not that we're not working, but like, like when we go back into society, right. Um, and you said, what do we want to keep? I think, that aside from keeping just the changes, I think we think about kind of um, all the connections and all the gratitude that we've been kind of forced into, and we bring that back into our everyday. So that if um, you know, so that we're just a nicer people people overall when we go back into the real world, and we remember that we're grateful for our coworkers and everybody, our families, and everybody else's. Um, you know, as we navigate through this new normal, whatever that looks like. And to that end, Jody, as you know, I've got an exit question that I love to ask everybody. And even if you've answered it a different way at a different <laughs> time, that's totally cool. Who is a hero of yours and why are they a hero? So who is my hero? A hero. Uh, a hero. Um, that's a hard question for me. So I, my, my current hero huh. is, <laughs> Um, I would say it's probably my dad. I mean, like okay. that's kind of a lame answer, but no, um, no. No. <laughs> it's a go-to, right? No. So, um, I guess like I've watched him through, like, obviously a lot of people know my background is, is that I was, um, you know, I kind of took over my dad's firm. We went through a lot of things together. I've watched him, uh, build and exit a visit business and, and do all this stuff. And what's pretty cool is with all this coronavirus stuff going on and all the tax law changes and everything happening at 80 years old, he is watching online CPE all day long and emailing me all the things that I need to be aware of and the new law and how it applies to clients. So, so he's not retired. And so what I think is so awesome about it is, is even though technically he's retired, um, you know, he's keeping himself busy and he's still so engaged with um, the profession and what he knew. And so to me that I, I just think that's pretty cool. So shout awesome. out to my dad. Awesome. Great stuff. <laughs> and uh, how can somebody contact you, Jody? Best way. Um, so uh, find me. You can find me on LinkedIn, on Twitter at Jody Paid our CPA or email is Jody, J-O-D-Y at botkeeper.com. All right. Jody Paid our, thanks for being a guest. Awesome. Thanks, Ed. For more Sage advice, visit and subscribe at sageadvicepodcast.com.